How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite aviation channel. Very exciting video for you all today. As you can see, we are here with a brand new airport update for Chicago O'Hare International Airport Terminal 5, which is the international terminal for O'Hare. This might be a bit confusing for some of you because if you remember the first time I did one of these uh, Terminal 5 updates was this past summer back in June. And in that video I mentioned that this would just be a one-time update. I don't have any plans to make Terminal 5 a regular update series on the channel. Recently I have come to the conclusion that, you know, because it is such a cool setup, I have a lot of fun doing it, I'm going to try and make this a regular series, a regular airport update series for the channel. I know a lot of you will enjoy it and, you know, give you something to look forward to especially, um, especially considering I don't have any other major model airports that I do besides Karachi and Lahore, and those are really inconsistent. So um, I know for the vast majority of my, my subscriber base, uh, O'Hare Terminal 5 will definitely be a really, really cool project and, uh, you know, series going forward. So um, besides the fact that it's a lot of fun, you know, doing this airport, nobody else is doing a regular O'Hare airport update series on YouTube. Nobody else is doing O'Hare updates every month or let alone Terminal 5. So um, I thought I might as well deliver in that regard. And I'm going to shoot for at least once a month updates or so for Terminal 5. It is such a big setup and it doesn't, it's not going to stay, you know, set up forever. I will have to, you know, take the the diorama down and reset it back up, you know, every now and then. So um, it will be kind of challenging, but I do think it's worth it. It's a lot of fun. Again, like I said, doing this airport and I, I did improve it a lot from last time, as you'll see in this video. Um, it's better than ever, my whole setup here. And you'll see that, like I said, in a few moments. Uh, so I, I did that just in preparation to make this a regular series. If I wasn't going to make this a regular series, I wouldn't have spent however long I'd spent, you know, <laughs> revamping the entire setup. So you'll see everything uh, in this video. Quick disclaimer, this is all, I put all the airlines I have for Terminal 5 in this video, just like the last update I did back in, in June. Um, there's no time frame, so it's just every airline, most of the airlines that I have for this project, I have them all in this video. Um, going forward, because it is, it's going to be a regular series now, going forward in future videos, um, I'll implement the time frames and all that to make it more realistic. Um, but for this update, you know, I just put in everything I had, most everything that I had. So, um, yeah, so without further ado, let's begin. Let's uh, give you guys a brief tour of the setup we got here. All right, so for those that saw the previous update I did for Terminal 5 back in June, um, the setup is pretty much the same in terms of like the tables. It's still like three tables that I'm using for this entire setup. Uh, right here we have the remote stands, which is basically the same as what you saw last time. Um, right here is the extension for Terminal 5 that they just completed back in, I think, October, November. So this wasn't there. Well, part of it was there in the last update I did back in June, but it was only like a part of it, like just up to here. Uh, but now that they finally completed the extension of Terminal 5, I basically was able to put all of it in here. So this is as realistic as it gets. Um, there is like a triangular portion right here that I had in the last update that you might remember. Of course, I don't have space to put it because there's no, there's no place I can put it. It would just fall right through. So um, that's where it would be. So just like a, it looks, it's not like a triangle, but it looks kind of triangular if, you're, if you've seen the actual terminal in real life. Um, but that's what that is. So here's just most of the hallway, not hallway, but the terminal here. This is what I'm most proud of right here. So I spent like almost two hours building this. This is the main head house of Terminal 5. It's uh, it's all right. I mean, I think I did a decent job doing it. It's, it's not the best, but it, you can tell what terminal it is for sure. Um, so this is a, it's a, it's two separate pieces. This top part, this really doesn't, it's not like anything in real life. It's literally just a bunch of windows. Um, this is a separate part actually. You can just take it off like that. Um, so this this entire, this is my, I'm most proud of this entire piece. I surprised myself with how good it turned out. It's not the best. I don't have any windows or anything on the actual terminal side, but um, it, it turned out really good. So basically what we have here, this huge like semicircle, it's just all windows. Um, down there would be the check-in hall. If you've been to Terminal 5, you know what I'm talking about. This is where the check-in hall and the drop-off area is. And you have security and duty-free and all the shops and everything. And it just branches out into all the hallways to go to the gates. And then um, this is new. This like little part here, you can kind of see where the demarcation is. Um, this is new. This is where the new Delta Sky Club is. Um, because Delta did move to Terminal 5 a few months ago. More on that later. So the new Delta Sky Club is here. I think some of the other airline lounges are here. And then the new gate areas for... Uh, M17, 
8, what is that, M16, 15, and 14, they're all right here. So that's what this part is. And this is the ramp tower. It's not the best, but you can tell it's supposed to be the ramp tower. That's one of them. And then the uh, the new ramp tower is right here. Also not the best, but whatever. Um, and then moving down this way. So it's gates, let's see, this is gates M2, technically M1 back here. I don't know if M1 still exists. The biggest challenge of doing this project was that there aren't any updated satellite images on Google Maps or Apple Maps. So I really had to guess with a lot of this. You know, I had to go off of the terminal map, as you can see, I had to print it out too, and go off of the map and see, you know, where all the gates are and kind of guess where to put them. So it was pretty challenging to some of the parts of this diorama might not be super accurate because again I couldn't tell where to put what because there is no updated satellite images so I couldn't have I didn't have anything to refer to basically so some of the stuff I put here some of the parkings the gates are kind of guesswork but I did my best and I think it turned out pretty pretty darn accurate for the most part so um, yeah basically we have gates I don't even know if M1 exists that's the thing I don't apparently M1 is still there gate M1 is like right here but I couldn't find any information about it. So we have M2, M3, 4, 5. We don't have an M6. We have M7, M8, M9, M10, M11. There's no M12, but we have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This right here, M17, is the A380 gate, um, where British Airways' is A380 parks at. So that's what this would be. This would be the, the jetway that reaches the upper level of the 380. That's what that is. And then we have uh, M18, 19, 20. 21, 22, or no, we don't have a 20, we have a 21, we don't have a 22, we don't have a 23, but M24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and then 30, we don't have a 31, but we have a 32 and a 33, and then 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, so, yeah, so the extension, before the extension, we only had 21 gates at Terminal 5, and now with everything, we have at least 36 to 40 gates, which is really, really good. Big, big improvement compared to what it once was, and it does alleviate the congestion quite a bit. So, but overall, the expansion is doing wonders uh, for Terminal 5 because, you know, again, you have all the extra gates, and especially you have dedicated narrow body gates for Southwest, especially, you know, Sun Country, Frontier. Um, you have dedicated narrow body gates so the planes can park there instead of, you know, you have a narrow body airplane taking up a wide body gate and you know that just causes a whole lot of problems especially if you're Chicago here in a pretty busy airport with a bunch of you know heavy wide body flights that arrive at the same time or whatever if you know what I mean so yeah uh, total we have I think 23 countries on here which is really good uh, for the most part I do have all the airlines represented here I am missing all but I have all but like seven or eight so we don't have uh, what's, let's see, we have, we, we don't have Aer Lingus, we don't have Air New Zealand, Air France, Austrian, uh, Finnair is seasonal now, so we don't have them. Air Serbia is going to be starting service here next year, um, so technically I don't have Air Serbia either, and we don't have Viva Aerobus, and I think there might be a few, uh, another one that I'm missing, but those are the ones that I don't have as of right now. I don't have Denver Air Connection. But that doesn't really matter. I mean, they're kind of irrelevant compared to everything else here. Um, so yeah, those are all the airlines I don't have. Everything else I have, which is really cool. Didn't think I would have so many, but I do. Um, other news, WestJet doesn't fly here anymore. Not, not a surprise. They were rumored to be leaving O'Hare anyway. So WestJet, for the second time, they've cut, oh cut Chicago and they ended service here. I don't know when. Or maybe they're seasonal. I don't think they are, but WestJet's gone. I didn't even know this. Avianca doesn't fly here anymore. Avianca cut service. I don't even know when. I think they flew to San Salvador from here. Um, so I don't even know when they stopped, stopped flying here, which is weird. I thought they flew here, but um, Avianca, either earlier this year or sometime, they stopped flying to Chicago. So we don't get Avianca anymore, which is really sad. Uh, but Air New Zealand is back, and uh, Air Serbia is coming next year for the first time. Or not the first time. The predecessor of Air Serbia used to fly here back in the day, like in the 90s or something, and then they stopped. Uh, but we are getting Air Serbia in March or something, March or May, whatever. Uh, Non-stop service between Chicago and Belgrade, which is really, really exciting. We have a huge Serbian population in Chicago. 
And one of my best friends who is Serbian, he's very excited about it because uh, obviously when he goes to Serbia, he flies Lufthansa mostly, so via Frankfurt or Munich. So he's very excited about it. Um, he was telling me the other day, or not the other day, but like a while ago. Um, so it's really good. It's really I'm really glad to see our Serbia coming here. And we are rumored to be getting uh, Saudi as well, Saudi Arabian Airlines. Apparently they're supposed to start flights here next year in the summer. They haven't made an official announcement, but... Somebody, I mean, I read somewhere they're going to be starting flights here next year. So we'll see what happens with that, if it even happens. But, yeah. Um, so that's all I have to show you here regarding the setup. And then, of course, I have a giant departure queue because it wouldn't be Chicago without the giant line of departures. Um, I think that's everything. Let's uh, stop wasting time and get on with the actual routes. So we'll start over on the other side by all the deltas. We'll get those done. Okay, so we're going to start off this update on the, technically it's the northwest side of Terminal 5, that's kind of where it points to in the direction. Uh, this is all Delta now, guys, which is crazy. I didn't think Delta would move to Terminal 5 this quickly, um, but the time came super fast, and Delta officially moved into Terminal 5, I think, back in October, I think. So they used to fly to from Terminal 2. And uh, because Terminal 2 is eventually going to be demolished with the new o ORD, you know, renovation project, I think part of that renovation project involved Delta moving to Terminal 5, and Delta put in a lot of money into this project. They invested a whole lot of money renovating the gate areas, the brand new Sky Club, which is in that part over there, and they took up this entire section, gates M1 through M11, all of this is Delta now. So, pretty crazy. Um, it happened really, really fast, because li literally this past summer I just flew Delta to New York out of Terminal 2, and uh, did not even think that it would be my last time flying Delta from Terminal 2. So Terminal 2 right now is, it's back to just all United and uh, Air Canada. So that's all Terminal 2 is now. Um, so yeah, Delta's at Terminal 5, and they got their whole, this whole section is all Delta. They took up all these gates, and uh, yeah, crazy. So we'll start over here with this uh, CRJ900 from Delta. This just came in from New York JFK and it's going to be headed back out to JFK. Over here is the A220-300 which came in from Seattle and is going to be operating service back to Seattle. Why not? Um, over here is the 737-900ER which came in from Salt Lake City and is going to go back out to Salt Lake City. Um, Salt Lake City right now I think it's a mix of A320 and 737-900, I could be wrong. And then Seattle is A220-100 mainly, but today we got the, the 300 from Seattle. So that's why that's there. And I think we also get this, we're gonna get the 737-800 from Seattle starting in next month. So that's cool. And then uh, JFK is a mix of CRJ-900 and uh, Embraer-175. Over here, pretty exciting to see this. Uh, Delta 757-200, uh, this is operating from into Atlanta. And then same with this one, it's pushing back with service out to Atlanta as well. So um, currently I think three of our flights to Atlanta are on 757s, which is very cool. Um, starting in January, I think, or not, sorry, not January, in May, it's going to be all 757s. I didn't even check March, but I think March is also mainly 757 to Atlanta, which is insane because if you don't know, back in the day, like before the 321 and the 739, Back then, you know, like 2011, 2014, not even that, 2012, 2013. Back then, it was all 7.5s to Atlanta, I think, from Chicago. And MD-80s and all that stuff, too. But, you know, this is, like, insane. Because we didn't start getting the 7.5.7 regularly at O'Hare until last year. 2021 was when we got that from Salt Lake City and Atlanta. And then they ended that 7.5.7 service for the summer. And then recently, we started getting them again. Back in November, they started flying the 75 from Atlanta again. And so we get it like three, four times a day from Atlanta only, which is really, really cool. So we have that, and then this one. And then, like I said, back in, starting in March or just later 2023, it's going to be like almost all 757 service from Atlanta to Chicago, which I'm very, very excited about. It's just like, it's so cool. It's a throwback to the old days. And uh, I think they're going to keep that going for throughout 2023. So let's hope so. So, uh, yeah, next up here, this is a new one. I got this a few months, or like last month or so, Delta A220-100, which, of course, is operating the service to uh, from and to New York LaGuardia. And then we have this A321, 
which uh, came from Minneapolis and it's going to go to Detroit. So I don't think they do Detroit on the 321 right now uh, or Minneapolis, but uh, it's mainly 717 and whatnot to those cities, A320, A319, CRJs, whatever. But um, you'll, you'll see a 321 every now and then on those routes as well as to Atlanta, A321. It's like once a day or something like that. Um, so yeah, this is all of Delta. Like I said, M M1 through, well, that's technically M2, M1's like right there, but all the way through M11, this is all Delta leased. Or not leased, but taken over by Delta. And one more thing I want to draw your attention to is like, is this right here. So you'll notice that it's a wide body stand, but there's two gates. So one for like two narrow body gates, like one here and one here. So O'Hare with the renovation, they added a bunch of like these kind of dual purpose, I don't know what to call it, but these kind of gates, they added a lot of these. You'll see a lot more of them down that way as well. So the thing is like, it, it works like you can park one wide body here and it'll use this gate, or you can park two narrow bodies, one here, one here, and then they'll each use their own gate. So that's what that is. I don't know why Delta has one of these gates. They don't fly wide bodies here, but I guess in the case they bring a 767 from Detroit or something like they did back in 2020, um, I guess that's what that is. So. There we go. All right, moving on to M, what is that, M13. We have an American 7879, which uh, just came in from London Heathrow as Flight 47, which is currently their only flight from Heathrow right now for the winter. I thought they had more. Um, they do during the summer at least, but I, I could have sworn they had at least two daily to Heathrow during the winter. Um, but this, this winter at least, they're only operating one daily flight. It's uh, 46 and 47. So that just came from Heathrow. That's going to offload and then once all the passengers and stuff gets offloaded, it'll get towed over to Terminal 3 and go somewhere else. Alright, moving on to the uh, international flights. They're not international flights, well. Wow. Um, international Airlines, I should say. Starting over here, M14, Ethiopian Airlines, uh, 777-200LR. Just came from Dublin, uh, sorry, Addis Ababa via Dublin as Flight 574. It goes back out to Addis Ababa directly as Flight 575. And uh, I've explained why they stop over in Dublin in previous videos, so if you know the reason, comment below so I can test your knowledge. Um, currently, Ethiopians flying the 787, they've been doing that ever since they started flying here. Um, it's a mix of 787-8 and 787-9. I don't have either of those, so I have this, for some reason I bought the 777-200 LR, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't have plans to get the 787, hopefully soon I might get it and sell this, but... We'll see. For now, it doesn't bother me that much, but there we go. Okay, and next up here, M4, no, sorry, M15. We have the Turkish 7879, which uh, I just realized the jet bridge isn't fully extended towards to the door, but oh well. Um, this came from Istanbul's flight 185. This is the first of two daily flights they have to Chicago. So it comes in as flight 185 around like 9 a.m., departs back to Istanbul's flight 186 around 12 p.m. And then we have the evening flight, which is the regular Turkish Flight 5, 6. Turkish Flight 5 inbound, Flight 6 outbound, that's the 777. Um, the 787 is the early morning flight, so it's just getting serviced and all that. Decided to put this one in because in the previous update back in the summer, I put the 777 in, so it's only right to put the 787 in this time. And then before I forget, we have some uh, American Airlines traffic taxiing to Terminal 3. So right here is the Ember 175. Um, it just landed from Oklahoma City, it's just taxiing to the uh, L Stinger concourse, and uh, later on it'll fly off to like Syracuse or something. And then over here is a 737 MAX 8, came in from JFK, and then eventually it'll depart off to Miami. Alright, moving on to gate M16, we have the Swiss A330-300, came in from Z what is that doing here? Uh, Swiss A330-300 uh, at M16 came from Zurich as flight... Eight, and it's going to go back in about uh, about two hours as flight nine back to Zurich. So this flight's currently A340-300 and uh, A330-300 mix. During the summer, it's more of a 777-300 ER, 340, whatever. Um, but else, what you know, it, rest of the year, it's mainly 330 and 340. 340 has been more common here um, during the past... This year and last year, 340-300 has been more frequent, which is cool. I'm really, really, really happy to see that. Um, but I don't have that, unfortunately. I have the 330, so that's good enough. And eventually, I'll, I plan on getting the 777 eventually. We'll see what, what, what happens with that, though. Alright, I don't have the A380, unfortunately. I do plan on buying that at some point for British Airways, but 
Um, for now, the triple three is gonna suffice. So, um, BA is currently doing A380 service on one flight and A350-1000 service on their second daily flight. So, this one right here is flight 295-294, which is currently the A380, but um, a few weeks back they actually did uh, down gauge it to a triple three for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, so right here, British Airways 777-300ER just landed from London Heathrow as flight 295 and it departs back to Heathrow after about 2-3 hours as flight 294. And then the 351-1000 operates the evening uh, 297 from Heathrow, 296 back to Heathrow. So there we go. And then again, this jet bridge would extend up to the upper deck of the 380. Can't really simulate that. I don't think I could simulate it anyway. I don't think that bridge is high enough. but. If I do get 380, I'll, I'll try it out. Why not? <laughs> All right, next up, we get M18 Air India 777-300ER. Um, this came in early morning from New Delhi as flight 127, and it's going to depart in a few moments back out to New Delhi as flight 126. Uh, Scandinavian A330-300 at M19. Uh, this came from Copenhagen as flight... I think it's 943, I could be wrong. 943 from Copenhagen, and the non-stop back to Copenhagen is flight 944. So that's what that is here. Uh, Japan Airlines, 777-300ER. I forgot if it's if they fly to Haneda or Narita. They recently changed it up, but I think they, they're they both they're both flying to Haneda right now. Um, so this 777-300ER came in from Tokyo Haneda's flight 10 and it's going to get towed to Terminal 3 in a few moments and then depart from there, K-19, as Flight 9 back to Tokyo Haneda. And then here's the ANA, their competition, 777-300ER, um, also just came in. Actually, no, the ANA does both. Oh, here's, that's really, okay, yeah, yeah, I just remembered. So, ANA, before the pandemic, they used to fly to both Haneda and Narita airports in Tokyo, and then the pandemic came, they ended one of them. Uh, but recently they've, they've brought back both flights, so they fly to both Narita and Haneda airports in Tokyo. So the way it works is that uh, one f plane will come in from Haneda, and then it's going to depart to the other airport. So it comes in from one airport and it departs to the other, if you understand. So um, this one, for example, came in from Haneda as flight, I think it's 111, no, 112. I think it's 112 from Haneda. And then it gets towed over to Terminal 1, and then it departs to Narita as Flight 11. So yeah, Narita is Flight 12 inbound, 11 outbound, and Haneda is Flight 111 inbound, 112, or sorry, 112 inbound, 111 outbound. So it's pretty cool. They do like a little bit of flip-flop thing. So the, I think it's the Haneda flight comes in, in the early morning, at like 8 a.m. and departs out back to Narita at like 12 p.m. and then in the afternoon the Narita flight comes in at like 2 and departs out to Haneda at like 5. So <laughs> that's a long explanation but that's how they do it. Um, so I'm really happy to see that back. So Japan Airlines was exclusively Narita before the pandemic. They recently just swapped it to Haneda Airport. So they're flying only to Haneda now but ANA is still doing both which is cool to see. And again, they don't depart from here, they arrive to Terminal 5, but um, they taxi to Terminal 3, and they taxi to Terminal Terminal 1, and they board, depart from there, alright? Over here, Lot Polish 7878, um, just waiting for a gate to open up, just came in from Warsaw as Flight 1, which is their flagship route. Um, today was the last day of service for Flight 1, it's ending for the season. Um, not saying Lot is ending completely for the season, but um, they have two regular services, Flight 1 and Flight 3, both from Lisbon, and Flight 2 and 4 back to Li Not Lisbon, did I say, I meant Warsaw, why am I saying Lisbon? Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, today was the last day of service for Flight 1 and 2. Um, it's going to be Flight 3 and 4 for the remainder of the winter season. I think Flight 1 and 2 comes back during the spring or the summer. So, um, I forgot if Lod is still doing Krakow service. I think they might still be doing that, but uh, Warsaw's year-round, albeit on a reduced frequency for the winter season, but um, yeah, flight one and two, today was the last day of service for that flight, and from here on out, it's just going to be flights three and four serving Warsaw. Uh, flight three inbound, flight four back out to Warsaw, so there we go. So that was flight one from Warsaw, just waiting for a gate, probably this Iberia when, 
when it pushes back, but yeah, all right. Uh, what gate is this, M24? Yeah. Uh, KLM 777-300ER. First time KLM is making an appearance. It wasn't in the previous update, um, but I recently bought this 333 updated new livery um, to replace my old livery one. I still have my old livery one. It was just broken in the last update, so I couldn't put it in. Um, so I bought this one to replace it. Not, not like I'm not selling it, but um, you know, just to have, just to put in the updates and stuff like that. So really happy to have this. It's good to have a, an updated KLM model because I didn't have any new livery ones before that. But uh, this just came from Amsterdam. It's flight 611, and it's going to go back out to Amsterdam in a few hours. It's flight 612. They recently changed their schedule in Chicago. I don't know why. Um, they previously used to arrive in Chicago like 2 p.m. and uh, depart back to Amsterdam by like 5. Now they've changed it so that they come in at 7.30 p.m. and depart at 10.45. So... Not sure why they did that, but KLM, it's going to be weird seeing them so late at night from here on out, but there we go, that's KLM. Alright, Iberia, um, I don't have their A330, which is what they fly right now, but I do have the 350. Um, this came from Madrid as flight 6275, and after offloading, it's going to get pushed back and taxi over to Terminal 3. Um, just like Japan Airlines back there, um, they're going to board and depart from Terminal 3. Uh, this goes back to Madrid as flight 6274. And here's a Copa 737-800 just landed from Panama City. Uh, it's going to taxi over and take probably that gate where the Spirit's going out from, whatever. Uh, so yeah, Panama City there. Uh, EVA, or EVA, I'm, I'm just going to say EVA, it's easier. Uh, 777-300ER, they're the last wide-body flight that leaves this terminal. They leave at like 12 a.m. Uh, they arrive at like 7.30, they leave at 12.30 a.m. Um, so they have like a five-hour layover in Chicago, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, EVA 777-300ER came from Taipei as flight 56, goes back out as flight 55. Oh, here's the Korean Air 777-300ER, uh, getting ready to push back for the return flight to Seoul. Uh, comes in as flight 37, and it goes out as flight 38. Brilliant. And, uh, oh yeah, so these are some more of those, like, dual-purpose gates. Um, well, not this, not these two, but this one especially, you can see it's a wide-body pad but you can also have two uh, narrow bodies, that's why there's two gates. So if there was a wide body, it would use this gate, and then, you know, this other jetway is for the another narrow body. Hopefully you kind of see the point of that. So, again, the Google satellite images aren't updated or whatever, I couldn't find any updated satellite images, so I don't exactly know how these gates are oriented, but, you know, hopefully next time I go to Terminal 5 or O'Hare, I'll be able to, you know, get the best judgment updated look at it, so I can implement that into the, the setup here. Uh, but over here, Frontier, A321. Focus, please, thank you. Um, and this is uh, coming from Cancun. I forgot the flight number. I think it's like flight 87. They have a few flights from Cancun. I don't know which one is which, but uh, came from Cancun, offloading here. It's gonna depart back out to Cancun later on. Um, Frontier's cut quite a bit in Chicago. They moved most of their operations to Midway and they only operate like four routes from O'Hare, literally, so I don't really mind that much, to be honest, but yeah, they're, they're only down to like four four routes from O'Hare now. A few of them are international, and like one or two domestic, like Orlando's like the only domestic flight they have from O'Hare now, so everything else goes from Midway. So there's Frontier, and then next to that is Iceland Air. Um, they don't fly 7.5s to O'Hare these days, it's only the 737 MAX, sadly, um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll get to 737 MAX later, but 757 came from Reykjavik as flight 852, and I think it goes back out as flight 853. I did not check that um, before I started this, but yeah, I think it's 852 inbound, 853 back to Reykjavik. All right, over here, M30 is the 78710 from United, uh, which just came from Frankfurt as flight 907. I think, and uh, it's just going to offload, then it's going to taxi empty, or get towed over empty uh, to Terminal 1, where it will depart from, probably to Brussels or Frankfurt or somewhere, because we get a lot of 78710 routes these days. All right, everybody, I really apologize for the switch up, but of course, my camera, low battery, was showing me the dead battery indicator at that point, so had to switch to my phone. This might be one of the last videos you'll see filmed with my iPhone XR because I am going to be upgrading to the uh, 14 Pro. It was on back order, so it's not here yet. I'm anticipating to receive it hopefully by the end of the week. 
So we'll see in the future. Um, I am, like I said, I'm upgrading to the 14 Pro, which is like a four generation upgrade from the, from the XR that I have right now. So this might be one of the last videos you'll see on this channel filmed with this phone, which is crazy to think about. Um, but yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway, as I was saying, we do get a lot of 7, 8, 10s from United. We've been getting these a lot from United. Um, so our Frankfurt service, both of them, both of our daily flights to Frankfurt on United are 7, 8, 10s. I think, uh, I don't know, Brussels is also a 7, 8, 7, 10. Uh, one more destination, I forgot what it was. I think Munich is also a 7, 8, 7, 10, which is weird. I didn't think Munich would be a 7, 8, 10. Um, and yeah, I think just those flights are all 787-10s right now, which is crazy cool to see. Um, and moving on here is another Dreamliner, United 787-9. Another exciting route that just resumed, not just resumed, but recently resumed. Um, this came from Tokyo Haneda as flight 880 and is now gonna get pushed back and uh, it's gonna taxi over empty or it's gonna get towed over actually. United gets their planes towed, they don't taxi them. Um, it's gonna get towed to Terminal 1 to part somewhere else. So. Uh, Haneda, I think, is one of the only Dash 9 routes that we get in Chicago. We also get our flights to Hawaii, Honolulu, and I think Kahului is also 7810. So yeah, Honolulu and Kahului, both of them are on 78710s. Insane. Um, and then the 7879 is not really that common. It's just like, it just does Tokyo and Sao Paulo, and that's it, as far as I'm aware. Because all the Zurich and London Heathrow and those are 767s. Amsterdam and Paris are 7878s. And yeah, it's not, not, not many Dash 9s from United. We get like two flights maybe from them. And then everything else is, it's mainly Dash 10s and then some Dash 8s, it's crazy. All right, um, moving on here to M34. Uh, Lufthansa A350-900 came from Munich as flight 434. It's gonna offload here and it's gonna taxi empty to Terminal 1 depart back to Munich from Terminal 1 is Flight 435. Okay, let me just move over here so you can see the other models. All U.S. flights now. Or not, well, U.S. airlines, I should say. Uh, here's the Sun Country 737. They have, I think, two or three flights to O'Hare a day from Minneapolis. And so they, they exclusively use uh, Terminal 5. So Sun Country 737-800. Um, I don't remember their flight numbers, but I think one of them is flight 244, 243 from Minneapolis. So that's here from Minneapolis. It's gonna go back out to Minneapolis. Okay. Uh, Spirit Airlines, A321. Uh, they don't fly from Terminal 5, but any of their international flights or all international flights except for pre-cleared ones arrive. I'm, I'm saying that for like all airlines, but um, for Spirit, they only use Terminal 5 when, you know, of course, they have international arrival from a non-pre-cleared origin. So, um, for the for this one, I think it, I think they only have like Cancun and Punta Cana. I, I don't know what their international destinations are. So we'll just say this Spirit three twenty one came from Cancun, and uh, after offloading, it's now going to get repositioned over to Terminal three and depart to like Orlando or something from there. Oh, here's the United seven thirty seven nine hundred ER. Um, this just arrived from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and you know, just same thing, getting offloaded. It's gonna go to Terminal One later and depart from there. Same, same thing. All right, uh, Southwest. Um, really exciting. Like I said earlier in the video with this new expansion, you know, we got a bunch of dedicated narrow body gates, which is good because the narrow body planes actually have their own places to park now. They don't have to take up a wide body gate and cause delays. Um, and ironically, still, even with this expansion, Southwest is still facing all those like horrible delays that I've mentioned in a previous trip report. Um, if you haven't, go check it out. It was a fun video to make, but not fun to experience. Uh, so Southwest is, this is their main area. You'll, you'll mainly see Southwest on this side now with the new expansion. So um, they still have way too many flights from O'Hare, in my opinion. That's just too much. Even with this new expansion, they have way too many flights to deal with. Um, because they don't really care about anybody else, they just care about themselves. Uh, they have too many flights from Chicago here right now. Just stay at Midway, please, and give us like five or six flights. It'd be nice. Okay, but here's a 737-700 in the Canyon Blue livery. Uh, this just came from Orlando and is gonna go onwards to Nashville. And then this one in the new livery came from Baltimore. 
and is going to operate service out to Dallas Love Field. There we go. All right, so that's the terminal. And now let's quickly do these remote stands. Here's a nice look at all the Middle Eastern airlines and then Tap Portugal just casually existing in the background. Uh, let's go on the other side, it's better. We'll just do Tap Portugal first, actually. Um, there's my tripod. Uh, here's Tap Portugal. Um, we'll just say the plane had a mechanical issue because normally you don't see Tap Portugal sitting here. I, I don't even know why I put it here, to be honest, but um, Tap A330 Neo, 900 Neo. Um, I also forgot their flight number. I think it's like 243 in from Lisbon, 244 out from out to Lisbon. Um, that's what it was a few years ago. I don't know if it's still the same. Um, but yeah, this is the Lisbon flight. It's just got a mechanical issue, so the flight's canceled. Um, and then here we have our beautiful Middle Eastern quadruple, quad, quad quartet. Sorry, I can't speak English right here. And sorry, didn't forget about Royal Jordanian, but here's the main three of them. And then there's Royal Jordanian. Uh, yeah, 7878 here from Royal Jordanian. This is flight 263 from Amman, and then flight 264 back out to Amman later on. Etihad 777-300ER came from Abu Dhabi as flight 151. It's going to depart back out tonight as flight 150. Yes, I do. I am aware that they are flying the 351-1000 now. Congratulations. Um, they started flying the A350-1000 in July. Uh, I have not gotten the model yet, hopefully soon. Um, whatever, I just put this one in because it's somewhat the same size, the triple three. And plus, we used to get this for the longest time before the 787 and the 350, so it doesn't matter. Um, also, this is a special plane to me as well. Um, this is uh, a 6ETH. For those that don't know, this is the exact plane that I flew from Abu Dhabi to Chicago in 2016. So it's kind of special to me put that one in. Just wanted to mention that. All right, we have Emirates over here, uh, flight 235 from Dubai and then flight 236 back out to Dubai. Uh, a lot of my friends, I'm so, so, a lot of my friends this winter break are flying on Emirates. Um, two of my friends last week, they went back to Dubai um, because they're from, they, they live in Dubai. So they went back to Dubai, of course, on Emirates last week. Another one of my friends who also is from Dubai, he's right now on the flight, Emirates flight to Dubai right now, as we speak. So he, he's flying on Emirates right now. And then my roommate, he's not one of my roommates. He's not even, he's not only my roommate, he was one of my best friends um from college uh, not from not from college from high school um him he also is one of my roommates in college now too um he's going to india in about a week and a half and he's flying emirates there too so a lot of people find emirates these days which is funny because uh no love for anybody else it seems like um and then last but not least over here is the Qatar airways 777 300 er uh flight 725 from doha and it's gonna be flight 726 uh, back out to doha Later tonight so the reason why these are all here for those who don't know um, the Middle Eastern carriers they do have pretty long layovers like six not six hours right five to six hour layovers they have in Chicago um, and so to make space at the terminal they just put them over here at the remote gates most most of the time that's what they used to do I'm not too sure if they still do it with the new expansion but mainly you'll see them parked over here by Balmoral Avenue which is like the, the road the actual like street is right here so because these these uh, parkings actually weren't here before, they recently added these back in like 2020 with the uh, expansion here. So they added this. These would actually be much farther back where that is now. These would be much farther back. But with the extension, they added completely new concrete, whatever, and tarmac, whatever. I don't want to. I don't know what the terminology is, but they added all these new parkings back in 2020. So um, the actual roadway is right here. There's a fence, and then there's a roadway. So you'll be driving on it and you'll be really close to all these planes, which is really cool. Um, so most of the time you'll see these three lined up together, these four lined up together, um, especially these three. I've seen all these three lined up together, which is really, really cool to see. So yeah, all right. Uh, last but not least, we gotta get this conga line, guys. All these flights delayed waiting, waiting for departure. Okay, uh, over here, just taxiing up for departures, the Volaris A320neo, it's going to Guadalajara. I don't know the flight number because they have so many. <laughs> Same with Air Mexico. But yeah, this Air Mexico 737-800 headed off to Mexico City. We have a United Express CRJ 550. This is gonna head off to, uh, we'll say, I forgot where they fly. They fly this everywhere, but I will say Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I feel like I always send this to Harrisburg, but whatever. 
Uh, JetBlue Ember 190, this is going off to JFK. A um, bit of news regarding JetBlue, they are also gonna be moving to Terminal 5 soon, which is so, like, is so, everybody's moving to Terminal 5, I don't understand why. Um, but JetBlue was recently, their crew were, or ground handling crew, um, they did some practice pushbacks yesterday from Terminal 5. So they were, I think, at M29, doing practice pushbacks with this thing. Um, so yeah, JetBlue is going to be moving across to Terminal 5 soon. They're at Terminal 3 right now. Um, so they will be joining the squad at Terminal 5 soon, which is kind of exciting, but also really annoying. Everybody's moving to Terminal 5. I think it's kind of ridiculous at this point, but it is what it is. And the ironic part is the plane that they were practicing on yesterday, doing the pushbacks, whatever, it flew to Boston, it took off for Boston, it had to return back to the airport. It squawked double seven, double zero, and they had to come back to land at O'Hare. I'm not too sure what the reason was. Uh, I'll put it on the screen if I find out. Um, but yeah, they had the JetBlue flight to Boston, one of them, uh, E-190, they had to return back to O'Hare yesterday. So hopefully everything was okay with them. But yeah, but JetBlue is gonna move to Terminal 5 apparently. So that's that. Uh, here's the Retro Livery American Embraer 170. This is gonna go off to Albany, New York. And it came in from uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, okay, here's the Embraer 145. Headed off to La Crosse, Wisconsin, came from Champaign. Uh, CRJ 200 going to Sioux City, Iowa, came in earlier from Decatur, Illinois. Ooh, this is exciting. This is the first time I'm showing this on the channel. This is the 757-300 from United. Uh, I got this a few months ago, but I haven't been able to show it in a video. Um, but yeah, I have basically, I have every single United mainline plane in the fleet now in my collection, aside from the 767-400, I have everything else. So this was one of the main ones I was missing, so I'm super excited to finally have a 753. Um, and the model itself isn't that bad. The mold is pretty good. The engines are fine. They're not like crooked upwards or whatever, but this is good, good to have this. Um, so the 753 is gonna head off to uh, San Francisco, came in from Denver earlier on. Uh, trying to get the best lighting, it's not gonna work, but whatever. Air Canada Ember 170, Air Canada Express Ember 170. Um, this is taxiing over departure to Montreal. And uh, like I mentioned earlier with Delta, ever since Delta left Terminal 2, it's just United, United Express, and Air Canada at Terminal 2 now. Uh, this is also somewhat new. It's my newest American 738. I got this a few months back. It's got the uh, updated Eagle logo winglets, the controversial thing that some people like, some people don't like. Um, but the 738 is headed off to Dallas, Fort Worth. Came in earlier from uh, Las Vegas. Here's a United 737-700. This is gonna head off to uh, Calgary, Canada. Came in earlier from St. Thomas. Finishing off the update with this Alaska 737-900 ER. If I find out they move to Terminal 5, I'm gonna lose it. I really hope they don't because we have too many airlines, as you can see. Not enough space for all you guys. Um, Alaska 739, this is headed off to Seattle. So Alaska and JetBlue are both at Terminal 3, Concourse G right now. Why JetBlue is moving to Terminal Terminal 5, I don't know. But I have a feeling Alaska is going to follow them. I hope not, but we'll see what happens. And I don't know why JetBlue is moving. They have a partnership with American. Why are you guys moving? I, I just don't understand why JetBlue is moving at Terminal 5. It just doesn't make sense, but oh well. So that concludes this update, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, future plans for this diorama going forward. Um, I will plan to replace these foam parts with a giant wood piece that I have. I recently sanded it down earlier today. Um, I'm gonna plan to like paint it white and replace all this with that wood piece. Hopefully by the next update, we'll see. Um, let me know what other improvements you wanna see with this diorama, cause um, I'm not too sure what else to do because it's not going to stay like this forever. I will have to eventually dismantle it in preparation for other airport updates because um, these tables are shared with other airports. Like this is my Lahore airport, or no, it's, I think I think it's this one. This is my Lahore airport. It's just flipped over upside down. Um, so I do need that for that airport. And then, you know, my Karachi airport was also using two of these tables, but it's there now. But that doesn't matter. I can put it on the floor. It doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, other improvements, I don't really know. I would like to add the windows and stuff on the terminal headhouse. I'll see if I even get around to doing that. But uh, I, I don't know what else to do. We have, of course, the 
the taxiways and everything, but that's a lot of work. I don't know if I'll be able to print out all those sheets of paper to do that, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Let me know what else you wanna see like improved with this setup. It's a, a massive, massive setup, as you can see. It takes up like a lot of space. Um, but there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, be sure to leave me a like in the comments, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and comment with anything you'd like to comment on. I have quite a bit of videos planned for this winter break because I do have but another four weeks off and I am taking like, I don't know if I mentioned, I forgot if I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, I am taking a, uh, a course, one of my business classes I'm doing over the winter break. It's a three credit hour course. Uh, it's only like a two hour, two, three hour time commitment every day. So it doesn't take too much time. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to stay on top of everything with that as I have been and also get some videos out for you all this coming break. So uh, travel plans, uh, I'll keep you updated. We'll see what happens with travel this winter break, but we'll see again um, Videos 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 of what I'm planning to just I'm just planning to make as many videos as I can uh, This break for you all and we'll see how that plays out. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching Let me know what you thought of uh, the new and improved terminal 5 and hopefully it'll be even better going forward with uh, more realistic updates and everything um, Just enjoy all this congestion while you can because future updates won't be this busy. Hopefully we'll see anyways this was a long video. It might have even been longer than the last update we did back in June, but that's it for now. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, I'll regret making this video later on, but oh well. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around with me till the end. Hope you enjoyed once again, and yeah, take care. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.